In the first unit of this class, we learned how to control devices called RC servos. We learned that servo refers to a device that has both a motor and a sensor together in one device so that we can control the rotational position of the device. We started with RC servos because they are easy to learn. But these devices aren't particularly accurate and their motion isn't particularly smooth. If you want to build better robots with greater accuracy and smoother motion, you will need to learn how to do your own motion control. That's what we'll be learning in this unit. In the second unit of class, we learned how to read encoders using this encoder that is on the back of this DC motor. In this video, we'll start to learn how to use the motor part of this device. By the end of this class unit, we will have linked together the motor part and the sensor part to make our own servo device that we can control much more precisely than the RC servos. Let's start by attaching the motor to the board using the motor bracket like this. This will help hold it steady while we experiment with it. Find the motor horn and press it onto the motor shaft. Note that the motor horn and the shaft both have a flat. Line up the two flats and then press the horn onto the motor shaft. This will help us see the effects of the motor shaft spinning. When we run a motor, it has a speed and a torque. The speed, of course, refers to how fast the shaft is spinning. The torque refers to how much force the motor is exerting on whatever it is connected to. The speed of the motor depends on the amount of voltage we put into the motor, and the torque depends on the current we provide. Every motor has a constant known as the motor constant that relates voltage to speed and torque to current, like this. The motor constant is a property of how the motor is constructed, and you can typically find it quoted on a motor data sheet. Or you can test the motor to find its motor constant. We are going to do that now because it will help us learn a number of other things we need to know about how motors work. Open up the PSOC code that we've been working on and make sure that the project sensors is set as the active project. If it's not, right click on it and then click set as active project. Now go to the top design. Go to the pins window. Note that C1 and C2 are plugged into pins 1, 6 and 1, 5. Now go to the top design and double click on quad deck 1. Go to the enable glitch filtering tab and check enable glitch filtering. Now go back to the C code. Here, right now we're printing out the potentiometer value. We want to go back to printing out the count from the encoder. Now program the PSOC. Now let's plug in the encoder. 
find the line labeled VDD and plug it into the power rail. Find the line labeled GND and plug it into the ground rail. Find the line labeled C1 and plug it into pin 1-6. And find the line labeled C2 and plug it into pin 1-5. Hit the reset button on the PSOC or program it to zero the count. Then carefully rotate the servo horn 20 complete rotations. We're trying to get an accurate number of counts per revolution for this motor. We can get a much more accurate read of this if we rotate the motor a bunch of times and then divide our resulting number by the number of times we rotated the motor. This is like taking an average of counts per revolution over a number of revolutions. My test gave a count of about 16,000, 16,276 counts in 20 revolutions. So if I take this number of counts and divide it by 20, I can get the CPR or counts per revolution for the motor. So we have about 814 counts per revolution or CPR. Now I want to know how fast the motor is spinning. First reset the count, then find the two motor wires. They're the two wires coming out of the encoder that we haven't plugged in yet and they're labeled M1 and M2 on the encoder. Plug one of these wires into the power rail and the other of the wires into the ground rail. Then, look at the numbers on the LCD screen. Are the numbers becoming larger or smaller? If the numbers are becoming smaller, swap the two wires around. That will make the motor spin in the other direction. Once you find the direction that makes the numbers on the LCD screen count up, take the one wire that's plugged into ground and unplug it to make the motor stop spinning. Now let's go write some code to calculate the speed of the motor. First, scroll down to find a digital output pin. It's in the ports and pins menu. Drag one of these digital output pins to the screen. Double click on it and let's name the pin motor and uncheck HW connection. Now go to the pins window and let's set the pin for the motor. Click on the drop down. And let's select pin 1, 2 for the motor. Now in the C code, we're going to start by writing the value 0 to the motor. Since the other line of the motor is plugged into VDD, when we set the motor pin low, the motor will turn on. Now we want to have a delay to wait for a while until the motor gets up to speed. Let's start with 500 milliseconds here, maybe. We might change this value later on. Now, after the motor has gotten up to speed, we're going to read the encoder count. So for now, I'm going to comment out these lines to read the potentiometer, and I'll also go back up here and change the count value to count 1. After we get the first count, we're going to wait for a certain amount of time, in this case, 1 second. After the one second wait, we want to get a second count from the encoder. So I'll copy this line.
and then paste it after the delay. And change its name to count two. I have to go back up here and declare count two. Then I'll create an integer for the difference between these two counts. Before we calculate the difference, we first want to turn the motor off. We can do that by doing motor right one. After the motor turns off, we want to calculate the difference between the two count values. Now, I want to convert count difference into speed. I know how much the count has changed, and I know how much time has passed. The other piece of information I need is the counts per revolution, which we've already calculated. I'll create a floating point variable and set it equal to the CPR value that we calculated. Also, I'll create a float called speed. Speed will be the speed of the motor in units of RPM. So speed in revolutions per minute will be equal to the count difference, which is units of counts per second, times 60 seconds per minute, divided by the counts per revolution, which would be the same thing as multiplying by revolutions per count. That would leave us with units in revolutions per minute, which is what we want here. Lastly, instead of printing count, let's print speed. Now, up here, we allowed 500 milliseconds for the motor to get up to speed. I feel pretty certain that's not going to be enough time. Let's change it to 1,000 to give the motor one second to get up to speed. Then, program the PSOC. Plug in the wire that you unplugged from ground into pin 1-2. Now, watch the speed number that's displaying to the LCD screen. It's possible that your number could be different from mine, but it should be pretty similar because we're using the same model of the motor and the same model of PSOC. I have approximately 350 RPM being displayed to my screen every time we do a little speed test here. So at 5 volts, the no load speed, which we'll learn about here in a moment, is about 350 RPM. We could use these two numbers to calculate the motor constant. The equation for the motor constant looks like this. Rotational velocity is equal to the motor velocity constant times voltage. So now we plug in our numbers. We measured 350 RPM as the speed when we applied 5 volts. So the motor velocity constant is 350 divided by 5, or 70, and the units of this are RPM per volt. Now, ideally, the motor constant will be a constant, meaning that if we would provide 4 volts to the motor, and then we could multiply this by 70 RPM per volt, the motor should be turning at about 280 RPM. Now, in practice, this isn't entirely accurate because it doesn't account for the effect of the internal friction of the motor. 
let's try and do a test to figure out the value of the motor constant at different levels of voltage. In the next video, we'll learn how to do this.